Welcome back to the Fancy Trading Room, hosted by Faceoff Sports Network. And today, we're going to be diving into the top 24 wide receiver and running back rankings. These are by far and away the most important positions. A lot is changing in the fantasy landscape. We have our first week of buys. So with that said, let's dive right into the running backs and quickly break down who the top guys are, who you should be starting, and who you should be sitting in this week five matchup. And to start off, I mean, we have CMC against the Cowboys. Now, the Cowboys do have a good defense. It is one of the best in the league. But at the end of the day, it's Christian McCaffrey. He had a four-touchdown day, 48 points last week. And in a position that's so shallow at this point with injuries and all that, you have to be starting CMC every single week. And he's the tier one guy by himself and number one option until proven otherwise. But right now, it looks like he is getting that prime Christian McCaffrey workload. So... At that point, you have to go, okay, we're starting Christian McCaffrey as the top guy every single week. And then the next guys below him are Bijan, Etienne, Pollard, and Jacobs. I mean, Bijan has a phenomenal matchup against the Texans. The Texans are terrible at defense. CJ Strato is looking pretty good. But besides that, I mean, the Falcons are not good. Desmond Ritter is terrible. They're going to be forced to run the ball. And the Texans are just bad. So if you have a guy as talented as Bijan going up against the Texans, you have to take advantage of that. Then we got Travis Etienne at number three against the Buffalo Bills. And I really like this matchup. I think that even though the Jaguars have struggled all season long, they can really turn things around, hopefully, in week five. We know the talent's there. We know Trevor Lawrence has a talent. Ridley has the talent. They've all flashed. But they just haven't been able to put things together. ETN should be a benefactor of this game turning into a shootout. It is one of the highest over-under games of the week. And then at number four, we have Tony Pollard going up against the 49ers. Again, this should be a relatively high-scoring game. Pollard's look great. you got to start him. He's in Tier 2. And then Josh Jacobs had a massive rebound last week. Right now, Josh Jacobs is the number one running back in receiving yards. And this is a massive value prop as even though he hasn't been nearly as efficient running the ball this year, He's able to get eight receptions and 11 targets to go along with 81 receiving yards last week. And in a PPR format, which we are assuming this is under, he will dominate. I mean, if you have a guy getting more receiving yards than Christian McCaffrey, he deserves to be a tier two guy, top five option for the foreseeable future. The Packers, solid game, should have a decent number of points. I don't mind it. Then next in tier three, we have Derrick Henry, Kyle Williams, James Cook, DeAndre Swift and Brian Robinson. So this is after the Bears took on the Commanders on Thursday Night Football. Go Bears, you see the backdrop. Finally, the Bears are going to much need to win. And Brian Robinson at 10 was a bad pick. I mean, I expected the Bears to get blown out as an unbiased content creator. But they didn't, and they won the game. So obviously, Antonio Gibson was on the field a lot more than he should have been. Brian Robinson was still getting some receptions, but his main value on the offense is as a runner. And even when they're close in games, but the Bears were blowing them out almost from the jump. In the first quarter, it was all Bears. Commanders had a play from behind. Horrible matchup. Did not see that one coming, even as a Bears fan. Derrick Henry looks great in games where the Titans are not getting blown out. It is unfortunate to see how much Tajay Spears is getting used, but the Colts aren't great. This should be a close game at least. So Derrick Henry, we've got to be starting him as a top, you know, 6 to 10 option this week at least. And Kyron Williams has been phenomenal. He's getting every touch in the backfield. He's not the most talented runner, but he's a good pass catcher. And he just does a lot of things very well. He's a good pass blocker. He's a good runner. And he's a very good pass catcher as well. So he stays on the field all the time. He's talented. He catches the ball. In a game against the Eagles where a lot of points are going to be put up, maybe not by the Rams, but they also have Cup coming back, which should shift the dynamic. We will see. At number eight, we have James Cook against the Jaguars. And I don't love Cook seeing how many touches he's losing, but the Jaguars should be a pretty decent shootout. I, I like the matchup. It's not a great, great situation for James Cook going forward as he's losing touches, but this week, I feel like we kind of have to throw him in here. And DeAndre Swift is a player that I wasn't particularly high on. Not because of the talent, but because of how little 
check downs he would see in this offense. And it just seems like the Eagles are finally deciding to be competent and not use Boston Scott and Kenneth Gainwell as much as they should be, which thank God allows DeAndre Swift to finally shine. Good for all you Swift fans. Not Taylor Swift. Um, not good for any of you guys because I'm sick of how much it's ruining. Every single broadcast I try and watch. Okay, I don't really care that much, but still. And it's not a bad game script. I mean, Eagles versus Rams. I think a decent number of points should be scored. So don't mind Swift in this game at all. I think he is number nine this week. I could see him going as high as six and as low as 10 in this tier three. So dropping out of tier four, we have Elvin Kamara, who looked great last week. I mean, he had 11 receptions, but running the ball, he wasn't very good. I think a lot of this was because Carr clearly wasn't ready to play. They should not let him go out there, but he really couldn't throw the ball downfield. So having Kamara as a check down option was a very viable uh, decision for him going forward. I don't know if that's going to be the case, but still, I feel like with how disgusting this landscape is, Elvin Kamara should be up there. Aaron Jones against the Raiders, he looks to be 100% healthy from the ports I'm seeing out of the Packers camp, but again, he has the upside. The Raiders aren't very good. These running back rankings are just getting so murky. But, I mean, Aaron Jones, I like. Joe Mixon, the Bengals have been terrible, but the Cardinals are really bad. I mean, offense, they've been, you know, all right, but their defense is not good. James Conner going up against the Bengals is a solid match as well. The Bengals have not been good at all. So I think this is fair enough to where Conner is not going to get phased out completely because the Cardinals are down a ton. Now, I've got a lot of hate for having Connor this low. And last week, I got a lot of hate, and he was not good because the Cardinals got blown out. But he's really a player where it depends on the situation. I know Josh Dobbs is like pretty good, but his offense overall is not that great. So he kind of has to have a good game script in order to be involved as an RB1 type back. And Tier 5, we have Mozart, Etienne, HN, and David Montgomery. But Mozart and HN I have back-to-back. It's really hard to rank these guys right now, but I feel like you have to start him in this range going forward. I think Mozart is still the lead guy, even though HN was the one that was fancy relevant last week. We have David Montgomery going up against the Carolina Panthers. I don't mind it at all. I think that now that he's back, Jameer Gibbs is really not being involved, so... After his 34-point performance, he was a little banged up early in the year, but he looks fine now. Then in Tier 6, we had Jonathan Taylor against the Titans. It looks like he's going to play, so I originally had Zach Moss on this range, but coming off the injury, not having played in quite some time, I'm putting Taylor here. Start with caution, but I feel like you still have to start him as a low-end RB2, as we talked about so many times. This landscape is gross. Taylor has a ton of upside. And at this point where all these players could be terrible on any, any given week. I feel like we should go chase an upside here. Then we got Alexander Madison against the Chiefs. Not a great matchup for Madison as he is not a very good pass catcher, but he really needs to be in a high-scoring game, and this is the highest-scoring game of the week, so hopefully he should see some personal opportunity, which is kind of where his value prop is, considering the fact that he's not a very talented or efficient runner. Ramondre Stevenson against the Saints. I feel like at this point, Ramondre Stevenson has not been good at all. But he has a pretty easy schedule going forward. And hopefully he can turn things around. I mean, we know he has the talent to do so. Zeke is kind of eating into his workload, but he's more shooting himself in the foot and not being efficient when he has these touches. But again, in this range, I'm shooting for upside. He's able to catch the ball very well. Again, there's not really many other backs I like starting him. I mean, Najee Harris... Brees Hall are two disgusting options. Khalil Herbert was, I mean, he he got injured, so the Bears aren't starting their fullback for the game. I mean, that's just disgusting. I'm not even really going to dive into how that worked out. And Jaleel McCollin, I definitely didn't say that right, but Javante Williams is back at practice, but I really don't know if he's going to play. I don't love this, but he had a solid game last week. I mean, he had 19 points, so again, he has the upside. The theme in this low end of running backs is shoot for upside. If we've seen the production, if they have the potential to do it, just go throw them in your starting lineup as a low end RB2. There's no one in this tier that has the talent 
and the workload. So if you see the talent, I mean, you kind of just have to throw it in there. But besides that, that's going to wrap up the running back tiers. And let's hop into the wide receivers. You should be starting for week five. So to kick off our wide receiver rankings, we have Justin Jefferson against the Kansas City Chiefs. I mean, this is a dream matchup right here. The highest scoring game of the week, the best wide receiver in football. We have Justin Jefferson in tier one. But we've also seen how good Tyree Kill has been. So it kind of feels disrespectful just to not put him up in that tier at least. I would start JJ this week, but I can see the argument with Hill as he's been, you know, one of the best wide receivers in fantasy football. And the Dolphins are a walking explosive factory every single week. My guy Tua has been lighting things up. Dropping out of tier two, we have Diggs against the Jaguars. I mean, he's coming off a 36-point performance. He's an elite player. It's a high-scoring game. Love Diggs here. Adams, I can't believe I'm saying this, but Jimmy Garoppolo is back. Aiden O'Connell did not look good last week. And even though I think he has decent potential, he was clearly not ready. So Adams should be flooded with targets once again. Then we have A.J. Brown against the Rams. We really like A.J. Brown. He's clearly the elf on this offense from a real-life perspective. After not getting the ball and complaining about it, he's suddenly getting the ball quite often. I think we can continue this trend. But again, he is kind of volatile with how many mouths there are to feed in this Eagles offense. Amon Ra is a player we're monitoring his health, but assuming he plays, he's a locked and loaded tier two guy. Jameson Williams is not going to hurt him. His first game back, he's not going to be involved. And even going forward, he is drafted as a field stretcher. I haven't had to talk about Jameson Williams quite some time, but he's possibly my least favorite player in fantasy football when people overrate him. Now, yes, he was amazing at Alabama, and he has the potential to give you spike weeks. I mean, if you're playing in best ball and you're getting him late, I don't mind that. But we've seen these players get drafted very high because they can stretch NFL defenses, and people don't understand how important that is. If you have a guy that can take the top off of your cornerback lining up on you and attract safety attention because that man is getting beat off the line, and obviously if you're wide open 50 yards down the field, you're every play and nothing's doing anything about it, you're going to score a lot of points. But no NFL team is going to give up 50, 60 yard bombs instead of, you know, helping out there and then dropping down and allowing maybe, you know, a four yard reception. That's not what's going to happen. So he's attracting attention away so he can get other players involved, which is great from a real life perspective, but drawing attention from the cornerback on the safety doesn't get you any fancy points, unfortunately. So Jamar Chase against the Cardinals is also in this tier to wrap things out. Hopefully that made sense to you guys. I know I felt like I needed to explain myself about my Jameson Williams hate. Not that I don't hit the player, it's just how things work. Now in tier three, we have CD Lamb against the 49ers. Good matchup. And then Olave against the Patriots is a player that I've been surprised to see people very concerned about. I mean, he's been great up until last week. And I would say, you know, Derek Carr was injured. Obviously, everyone knows that. We can kind of just disregard that. But no, people are concerned that Kamara is getting 11 receptions. Carr doesn't look good. Yeah, because he was injured, he couldn't throw the ball downfield effectively. And he looks much better. We've seen reports that he's regressing. I'm not worried about Chris Olave. He's a great player. We're starting him here with confidence. Then we got Waddle, another player that hasn't been necessarily great. I just I feel like his time is coming. He's too talented. The offense is too good not to make him here. We got Cup ahead of Puka even coming back. I feel like it's just how their system is. Cup is going to be sliding back into that role. I'm not sure how much they're going to ease him in. I could easily see you putting in Puka above him, but I'm just trusting the talent that we've seen with Cup and the fact that it is his role and he's not losing that to Puka because of how good he is and the Rams are going to respect that. But We'll see. They're in the same tier, so you go either way. I understand both viewpoints. Devonta Smith against the Rams is a solid matchup, and Smith has a ton of upside. Again, kind of volatile with A.J. Brown, but, you know, the talent's there. You should be starting Devonta Smith every single week. Then this next tier, guys, we have Ayuk, who looks fully healthy and has dominated so far. Pittman, who finally, hopefully, should have Anthony Richardson back. I mean, he's kind of struggled with injuries on and off this year. Who knows what's going on, but either way, he's looked great with Minshew and Richardson. Calvin Ridley could easily have a bounce back game this week. 
I think if the Jaguars are going to turn things around, they're going to do it this week. In a high-scoring game, their offense should be on the field a ton. I feel like Ridley, you have to start him still. Then we got Debo, Terry, and Garrett Wilson, all kind of in the same tier. These are players I love, but Garrett Wilson, I think, is finally somewhat fantasy relevant to an extent because you've seen Zach Wilson feed him the ball. Zach Wilson looked good last week. From what we've seen, I think having him at 19 is a fair ranking. Then tier six, we have another whole tier of guys. Nico Collins, Marquise Brown, DJ Moore, Adam Thielen, Jacoby Myers, and DJ Moore obviously should not be at 22. I mean, he had 48 fantasy points. He was electric tonight as recording this after Thursday Night Football. As a Bears fan, again, I did not think the Bears were going to be that good. They probably, they were seven and a half point dogs to the Commanders. It looked like they were going to get blown out. And I was expecting DJ Moore, you know, kind of finish in that range, get some easy late yard receptions and receiving yards while they're getting blown out. But no, if he has decided he wants to look competent, he looked pretty good. I mean, he, he wasn't great. From every aspect, he did miss a few touchdowns, but he got DJ Moore the ball and he fed that man. DJ Moore is getting fed. Obviously, I'm gonna correct this and move him up for the rest of the season rankings. Adam Thielen's a guy we should be starting every single week going forward. Now he's 33. Can he keep this up for the rest of the season? You know, probably not, but for now, he's proven us wrong. He's the clear alpha wide receiver in this Panthers offense, and it's not a bad matchup. Jacoby Myers should be a big benefactor from Jimmy Garoppolo returning as well as Garoppolo targets him a lot more than Jacobs, which is kind of shown last week. Jacobs ate and Jacoby Myers wasn't very efficient. Again, we'll just go back up to Nico Collins and Marquise Brown. I mean, they're both just meh. Nico Collins had a great game, but I don't know if I necessarily trust anyone on this Texans offense going forward. Kind of seems like him and Tank Dell have on and off weeks. But I'd still like Collins over Dale. And Marquise Brown against the Bengals should be a close enough game. Brown is pretty talented to where I feel like we should be starting him as a wide receiver too as well. But with that said, that's going to wrap up these week five wide receiver and running back rankings. If you enjoyed, be sure to subscribe to the Face Out Sports Network down below for more fancy content. We'll be helping you win your week and your league on every single video we post on this channel. If you enjoyed my content, subscribe as well as I'm going to be posting these type of videos and then waiver wire videos. Every single week, I'm also planning to dip into the Dynasty content and maybe scale back, help out with the waiver wire videos instead of making them in my own production. But either way, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.